This year, BT released something that I've been waiting for for years. They finally gave us gigabit internet. Ish. But more on that later. Until now, BT customers with FTTH have been stuck with around 300 down and 50 up, which is a, a far cry from the internet that I personally grew up with and I was privileged to grow up with around 5 meg down and about 0.1 up. But some, some countries have had gigabit and 2 gigabit and 5 gigabit connections for years. For ease of viewing, I'm not going to go into the politics of this situation because today my job is to review BT's full fibre 900 package. The upgrade procedure was pretty painless. I phoned up the salesman who didn't actually know that full fiber 900 package even existed. We fixed that, he learnt from me, and then uh, within 48 hours the connection was set up. They had sent out their Smart Hub 2, which is an MFND multifunction network device, which is what I call these things because technically they are not hubs, they are switches, access points, and routers usually all in one package with no hub in sight but you can read up on that if you want to learn more about what hubs are. BT has a massive FTTH network fiber to the home which is fiber directly to your house not to a cabinet and then copper out fiber directly to your house. I have personally had FTTH for a while now I've had it since I moved into this house about six years ago and it's a little box on the outside of the house which is grey in colour, at least what I have. A cable then runs through the house to your ONT, optical network terminal, where it then converts to ethernet or copper connection, which will then go into your MFND. Because I had this set up five or six years ago, none of that changed. The only thing that did change initially was that they sent out their Smart Hub 2 to replace what I had, which as you'll learn later on, wasn't even what ended up happening. Let's get the MFND out of the way. So they'll send this to you, £9.99 postage and packaging. It costs £200 on their website, which I cannot quite make sense of because they sell like Netgear and Asus routers for less money that are actually better. So this thing has AC Wi-Fi built in. It has four gigabit ethernet ports and the WAN port. Now I haven't used BT's MFNDs for a number of years now, not because they are not quick, they are definitely quick, but in my experience, they're just incredibly unreliable. They kind of go down and sometimes you lose connection. For the longest time I've been using my Linksys, which I'll put the model name up now. In my previous video about this, when they launched the service, I did say that it wasn't working properly. However, five hard restarts managed to get me the speed that I need. So yeah, that all ends up working fine. There shouldn't be a problem with third party routers, access points and MFNDs. However, uh, with some stuff, you just have to troubleshoot and deal with the technical steps. So I did like five, six restarts uh, as in kind of resetting all the factory settings and it worked just fine. With that in mind, I'm not gonna be talking about Wi-Fi in this video because obviously that is limited to the access point that's being used, which in my case is a third party unit. The speeds offered in the 900 package are around 900 megabits per second down and 120 megabits per second up. Don't get megabits and megabytes confused. It does my head in. Small b is for bits. Big B is for bytes, it's as simple as that. My average download speed has been around 750-ish megabits per second down and 110 up on my desktop computer, which has been connected over gigabit ethernet. That said, I've never really gone above 800-ish in uh, Steam, uh, in Origin and in Epic Game Store even though my system should be capable of, uh, of that with an NVMe SSD with fast write speeds, 32 gigs of RAM and a six core i7. I'm not sure if this is something to do with the, the way that the games are compressed or perhaps to do with the network itself, but that's just something I wanted to point out. And both my Xbox One X and PS4 Pro cap at around 300 megabits per second on the download, though this is very, very likely due to the mechanical spinning discs inside them that are just too slow to keep up. This is something that a lot of people expect that when they get the, the 900 megabit per second package, that they'll instantly be able to download games on their console very quickly, and 300 megabits per second is quick enough, but it's not the full speed, so beware of that. Speeds do fluctuate pretty heavily. Sometimes I'll get less than 200 megabits per second on the download, 
mode and no other devices in use. However, this is never for more than about an hour. Upload stays weirdly consistent though at around 110 to 120, which is ideal for my job. My average ping has dropped from like 20 to 15 milliseconds to the same test server. I'm not sure if this is coincidence or maybe uh, by resetting my MFND, I actually get a better router connection, but the link hasn't changed. So yeah, that's a bit strange. An incredibly important factor for me is reliability. As a lot of you guys know, my job is to uh, run this YouTube channel and also to help run Android Authority. And so a fast upload speed and a fast download speed as well as being consistent, very important things for me. Now, like I said before, the upload speed is consistent, which is great, but the reliability is something that I have never really matched ever before or since. Now, I believe this is mainly due to using my own MFND and router hardware because since starting to use this about two years ago now, I have had no drops in internet. And the only drops I have had have been when I pulled out the cable with my foot because my MFND sits right around where my foot is. I know it's not the ideal placement, but right now it works and I'm too lazy to move it. In fact, back when I was a little bit of a technician as my side gig, a lot of people's problems with BT, they're not actually from the connection itself, but from the MFND, the Smart Hub, or the BT Home Hub, as it used to be called. And so when people say, oh, BT is unbelievably unreliable, and this sort of stuff is usually to do with that. Like, I would say at least 80% of the time is to do with the included MFND, and most usually the router or even sometimes the Wi-Fi access point, part of the MFND. So if you're getting an unreliable BT connection, do try and use your own hardware as it could prove to be the best fix for your problems. Value for money is something that has been brought up a lot when I talk to my friends and family about how much I actually pay for the internet because this package is about 60 pounds per month. And to be fair, I think it's pretty reasonable to pay even up to £100 per month for a good, solid, reliable, fast internet connection because everyone is using the internet. You know, if you're, if you're only using it for basic tasks, of course you're not going to pay for a more expensive package. But if you are paying for that more expensive package, you're more likely to have lots of smart devices in your house. Your smartphones, tablets, laptops, smart TVs, Chromecasts, games consoles, smart fridges, you know, Alexas and Googles and stuff like this, everywhere. And for households of three people or up who are constantly connected, this can take a toll on any network. So having something that's nice and fast, a nice fast uh, WAN connection, you know, it's not the fastest in the world. It's not gonna give you symmetrical gigabit. It's not even gonna give you full gigabit. But for this kind of thing where we are now, this is heaps better guys than five years ago where we were topping out at around maybe 70 megabits per second down and 10 up. So yeah, it's slow and it's because of stuff that happened way back uh, before the year 2000, but it is stuff that is slowly getting better and we have to be thankful of that. Especially for where I live, which is Cornwall, it's literally the, the foot end of the country and we're getting these speeds. Anyone who currently has BT's FTTH or sublets of BT like Talk Talk Sky Plus Net, you guys are likely going to get this within the next two years, which is awesome to see and this rollout is actually going quite quickly. Is it perfect? No, honestly, I wish I had faster speeds. I would be much happier with 500 by 500 than I would a gigabit by 110. I do a lot more uploading and it would be really useful for that. However, what we have I'm thankful for is something I've wanted since I was a kid and yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. And before anyone comments, no, you, we do not have Virgin Media down here where I live and even so, it's not gonna offer the same speed as BT is. That is about it for today's video, guys. If you want me to cover more networking and internet stuff, please do let me know because I'm fascinated by the, the topic and I actually have a bit of a documentary planned for something I'd like to do in the future about this, but do let me know if you wanna hear anything else. Please do hit like, dislike, comment, and subscribe if you're new around here to never miss a video like this one. Also check out my links and my socials and stuff in the video description. I wanna give a massive shout out to my patrons for being continually supportive. Thank you so much, guys. It really does mean a lot. I've been Ryan Thomas, and I'll see you later. Peace.